My name is Jacqueline Kimmy, and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Microbiology and Environmental Toxicology. <laughs> I don't know what my department is. My name is Raina Sacksetter. I'm a second year graduate student in the Kimmy Lab. My name is Katherine Palmer. Uh, I'm a second year PhD student, and I am a member of the Kimmy Lab. My name is Jacqueline Kimmy, and I am an assistant professor in the Department of Microbiology and Environmental Toxicology. So my lab is interested in understanding how differences in uh, human immune responses influence the outcome of infectious disease. We know that over the course of your life, you'll get sick at different times, and we don't understand why that happens. So at the end of the day, it's really, why do we get sick? Within a population, you'll have multiple people that get exposed, and some people get sick and some people don't. So one of the things that I'm interested in is not only understanding why that happens, but also when does that happen? And we hope that by understanding that, we can try to make interventions that will prevent you from getting sick in the first place. Our lab focuses primarily on an organism called Streptococcus pneumoniae, and this is the primary agent of bacterial pneumonia. Also causes sinus infections and ear infections, um, as well as very severe infections such as sepsis and meningitis and can lead to death. Our lab uses zebrafish as an animal model of infection. And one of the reasons we do this is because in their larval state, they're naturally transparent. And we're able to take advantage of a lot of genetic tools um, in order to kind of label different cells as well as use fluorescently labeled bacteria. And we can infect the zebrafish and use microscopy to see the entire course of infection as it's happening in real time. I study the relationship between circadian rhythms and immunity. And so in order to do this, for example, we can insert a transgene that can tell me when a specific circadian gene is being turned on. Um, and so for example, maybe the fish will fluoresce green when a specific clock gene is being turned on. And so I can actually track the rhythmic changes over um, multiple days in the live fish and then see how they're changing um, if I infect the fish. So I have a couple of research projects that are just starting right now. One of them is to look at basically how infection changes over time and how host immune effectors are modulated either by infection or during infection. We know that when, we, when mice are infected and humans are infected with streptococcus pneumoniae, um, either in the morning or at night, they can have differential outcomes. So, and so something that I want to do this fall is to look at if we infect these mice uh, through their nasal passages or in their trachea, what kind of outcomes might be variable um, to that type of exposure. So if we infect in the morning and then at night, different times of day of an infection, will we see variable outcomes? My favorite part about being in the Kimmy lab has got to be the people. I feel like we're a really great little tiny community um, and we all just want to support each other and help each other with our experiments and in life. The first and the most important thing within my lab is the community. There's so much science to be done and there are so many questions that are interesting and are valuable and so that's always going to be the case. So what really matters is that you have a team that can work together and really support each other and feed off of each other. And so a lot of scientific discovery comes from creativity and having someone to bounce ideas off of and work together and say, hey, this is cool, like we could do this, let's try it. <laughs> it was more words than you had intended, but. Nice.